We've all seen the moment in a movie when our hero blasts away or is blasted away by their nemesis. The lump of lead explodes out of the barrel, propels through the air, and smashes into their body part of choice. This knocks the target clean off their feet, and sometimes, depending on the firepower used, into the air, where gravity quickly takes over, bringing them crashing down to Earth in dramatic style. But have you ever wondered, how realistic is this? Can the momentum of a speeding bullet be enough to lift a bad guy into the air? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. Like, subscribe, and leave us a comment now about whether you thought a bullet could actually do this or not. Now, if you've grown up watching movies depicting villains and their dutiful henchmen being launched backward into the air upon being shot, you might never have thought that the reality could be any different. Of course, guns are very dangerous weapons, especially some of the more powerful ones, so it's not entirely outside the realms of possibility that a human being could be significantly knocked back by a sufficiently burly bullet, right? As usual, it is the trifling matter of physics that reveals the problems with this classic movie trope. First of all, bullets aren't designed to knock you backward. They are designed to break through your skin, cause as much internal damage as possible, and, you know, kill you. Ranged weapons utilize high kinetic energy focused on a small area at the tip of the bullet, enabling penetration of the skin and access to your fragile gooey insides. Indeed, bullets are so deadly specifically because they are small lumps of relatively hard metal with relatively little mass, making them fantastic at flying through the air at high speeds before ripping through your much softer biological matter. However, as bullets are ultimately still just small lumps of metal, usually weighing only a few grams, they lack the necessary momentum required to knock over an entire person, as the average human being usually weighs significantly more than just a few grams. Obvious practical concerns aside, if bullets were meant to dramatically throw a person backwards upon impact, they'd have to be a lot bigger, heavier, and flatter in order to exert their force over a large area of your body without just tearing into your flesh like a regular bullet. And not for nothing, while the effects of such a projectile on a person would undoubtedly be unpleasant, they would likely be far less fatal. Perhaps unsurprisingly, there actually has been some academic interest in this popular movie cliché, and for quite a long time too. In 1996, an article published in the International Journal of Legal Medicine assessed the physics of the displacement of the human body upon being shot full of proverbial lead. It states that the maximum momentum transferred from different small arms projectiles, including large caliber rifles and a 12 gauge shotgun, only results in a backwards motion of an 80 kilogram target body of 0.01 to 0.18 meters per second, which is negligible compared to the velocity of a pedestrian, 1 to 2 meters per second. Furthermore, counterbalance is constantly maintained by neurophysiological reflexes, so the effect of the momentum transferred from the missile is virtually zero, and there is no backwards motion of the person shot. In layman's terms, this essentially means that most gunshots from regular firearms only impart a knockback of a few centimeters per second. Even being shot by a 12-gauge shotgun will only push you, or part of you, back a maximum of 18 centimeters per second. This movement will also diminish to nothing almost immediately after the initial impact, in part because, assuming you weren't shot in the head, your body will reflexively respond to the hit and compensate accordingly. Ultimately, the amount of backward motion caused by even the most powerful firearms ranges from minimal to pretty much negligible. And the physics issues don't stop there. Indeed, if you're enjoying learning about this sort of topic, intertwining science education into entertaining videos, then please like and subscribe, and make sure you turn on the notifications so that you don't miss our next release. And why not leave us a comment about what topics you'd like to see us cover in the future? Right, back to the physics issues. You also may have noticed that while this classic trope frequently involves the victim being blown backwards into the air, stopping only upon impact with the wall behind them, the person doing the shooting never seems to be affected beyond the standard kickback you would get from firing a regular gun. This violates one of the most fundamental concepts in physics, namely Isaac Newton's third law of motion, which famously asserts that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This isn't usually a huge problem when firing a regular gun as the gun itself has considerably more mass than the bullet it is propelling and is also equipped with a nifty little handle, which makes absorbing recoil fairly easy. 
However, if there were a firearm capable of blowing enemies into the air, Newton's pesky third law dictates that it would exert the exact same amount of force on the person firing it, meaning that even if you could create such a weapon, the user would necessarily be blown off their feet as well. Not ideal. So, it's fair to say that bad guys flying all over the place after being shot by a regular firearm is a slight exaggeration. But perhaps we're being a little too hasty in dismissing this trope entirely. Are there any circumstances under which being shot can significantly propel a person backwards? For instance, what if you get shot with a relatively powerful firearm whilst wearing a bulletproof vest? If you're wearing something that prevents bullets from penetrating your body and all that kinetic energy has to go somewhere, surely the impact you'll experience will be much greater than if the bullet went straight through you. Well. Yes, that is true, but it still wouldn't be anywhere near enough to create the comically large knockbacks that you see in certain films and television programs. Most bullets are still far too small to forcibly hurl a person into the air even if they are prevented from puncturing you. Furthermore, even though bulletproof vests are very good at dissipating energy from gunfire, they are not 100% effective, and it is possible that bullets fired from sufficiently powerful firearms could make it through. Guns that actually are powerful enough to knock a person backwards or up into the air are not handheld. They are artillery weapons that are either attached to sturdy support frames that stand directly on the ground or are mounted onto heavy, fortified vehicles like tanks and warships. And frankly, the kinds of projectiles that these guns fire are often the sort that don't merely blow people into the air, they blow them to smithereens. In reality, when people get shot, they don't get thrown backwards, they collapse and fall. Sure, if a person is shot when they're off balance or leaning backward, they might fall pretty far, especially if they manage to take one or two steps before they actually go to ground. And of course, there are some particularly powerful firearms that exert considerably more force on a target and hit far harder than your average handgun. But as Drs. Neubuhl and Karga put it, this is a myth that is easy to disprove, but hard to destroy. Because not only is it a staple of nearly every action movie, but in the real world, so many medical professionals don't understand the physics of what happens to the human body during gunshot wounds. So-called experts again and again tell judges that a bullet will knock down a man or throw him backwards. If this statement is not refuted in the courtroom, the person accused of shooting someone may suffer a miscarriage of justice. So, as for literally being blown off your feet, much less across a room or through a glass window in dazzling slow motion, I'm afraid, my friends, that those are the lies of sweet lady Hollywood. Not that we're complaining, this classic movie cliché may be entirely unrealistic, but that doesn't mean it isn't very, very cool. Pass the popcorn. Thanks for watching and we hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed this video then please subscribe for our next release and check out our other videos here. See you next time.